Okay, let us go ahead and get ourselves going again. Okay, we're going to continue playing around with ductwork and just trying to model ductwork systems. What we've been doing is placing some air terminals, connecting them together. Now we're going to start placing some air handling equipment to tie it all together. But the same basic principles apply. And really, the things to watch out for, as we've been you know, kind of talking to different people over the break, that are really the ones that sort of get people in trouble more than anything is, oh, different sort of connections where, especially if, for example, there is a reducer. Let me kind of show you an example of a classic problem that we typically have. Like, see this guy right here? He's transitioning from a bigger duct over on this side. This duct is 12 by 12. It's 9 by 9 over there. So, we're 9 by 8. What will happen is if you change your layout radically and it wants to end up being much bigger on this side, so it's no longer a reducer, but it would actually enlarge it. Okay? That's something that will cause Rev a lot of troubles. It won't know what to do. So if, on the other hand, as opposed to being 8 by 8, it's actually changed to be like 15 inches. Actually, this time it actually responded pretty smartly. I'm sort of surprised about that. Often what will happen is Rev will come back and complain and say, oh, you know, some element that you put in there is now inside out. You know, and it needs to flip the direction of it. So in that case, what's generally best to do is just go through and just get rid of the offending piece. I can't try reconnecting them. Okay, and you can resize it and then kind of connect them. But it's really it's it's all order of operations. It's very fussy about like the order in which it understands how to go through and fix things. I put that back into here. It'll put the right type of reducer in there. Notice as I drag these things around, there's a couple representations for the duct. So just pay attention to that for a second. Notice there's this green line representation. That's actually the center line of the duct. Okay, It's a, also called a placeholder for the duct. As I go pulling forward, notice that when I get to a connection point, the cursor changes to a very special cursor. It looks like a kind of circle with an intersection in the middle of it. Okay, That actually indicates that it's actually hitting something. So if I do this, and they appear to be connected, it's sort of connected, but not really. What's happening is I just have a duct running inside of a net of duct spatially. So it doesn't really understand that it's being a connection. So we can come back. And if you're really hitting the connection just right, It'll join in. Now, some other little nuance about ducts, just so you sort of know where these transition pieces is, it tries to do a pretty good job making these transition pieces. That's a little T piece right now. Let's see if I can find it. That's a little reducer of some type. Okay. If I'm going to go through and pull in another duct, and we'll start with a new file in just a moment here, but let's just go and finish this one out. If I pull in another duct, and I pull it right here, okay, things tend to be okay. That actually sort of worked. If I pull it right here, okay, this may cause a little bit of trouble. Can you see why? Just as it physically tries to put the new piece in, it might conflict with the old piece. So. It'll probably give me some sort of complaint about routing. Okay, not enough room to put in the required fittings. Okay, so you have to watch out for that. When you try to put things in, if they're just a little bit off, it's as good as being way off because it just doesn't know what to do. It can't substitute a piece in there. So I'll cancel that. What you can do, though, is if you want to go through and put something in, for example, if I want to put a piece of that would be the ductwork running this way, and I knew that it was really just perfectly aligned with this piece, what you can do is take any of those little transitions. Let me take that transition right here, select it, and notice it sort of tells me a little about the connection on right now. It's a 12 by 12 on each side, it's 8 by 12 on this side. It's got a little plus sign there. What that plus sign does is it lets you take a T and make it into a quad. It lets you make it four way. So if you have a piece of a connection and you want to sort of either increase or decrease, you can plus, and it basically put another connector on it. It swapped a three-way for a four-way. 
So now, as you go through and you put the ducks in here, you have a valid connection. So just know about that. That also comes in often when we do piping and stuff like that. You put a lot of things in there. If you want a two-way to become a three-way, or a three-way to become a four-way, you have to kind of watch out for that little plus sign. Okay. Other random things to watch out for in terms of these ducks. Oh, over here on the end, looks like it's not quite connected. Okay. You can use your trim tools to take care of that. You can just pull it across. If you pull it across and you get to the middle, that's actually good. It'll replace it with whatever's allowed, whether it's a T or an angle or an elbow transition. Okay. But another way to do that that I tend to use an awful lot is I'll just trim things. So I'll modify and just trim the center line of this one to the center line of that one. And it just does it with some precision that way. That way you don't have to worry about fussing with it so much. Okay, so we have some basic supply ducts. At some level, you're all going to run supply ducts through your place and also run some return ducts. And at a high level, that's what you do in terms of modeling this stuff. We can get all sorts of calculations about the sizes and how much air has to flow through them. But the spatial task is really just networking all those things together and getting them in place. If you want to start over kind of with a clean file, you could go ahead and say under 2C, ducts mirrored to both sides of the building. That's just the same file where I've sort of done supply and returns for both. So you'll get a sense of something a little bit cleaner. what this one looks like. <coughs> Something like that. So this has supplies and has returns. Now, in this system, I'm bringing the returns together over at the kind of upper left corner of the screen, the supplies together down at the lower right corner of the screen. But we're really going to try and pull it together for a little uh, an air handler action here in the middle. Okay, so let's talk about that. Now, as you look at this, oh, people have pointed out that this isn't the most efficient, sort of right at the ends. Often when I'm going through and doing this, I'll leave the little overrun in there and put a cap on there at the end of the duct, which would allow for further expansion, but I don't really need that. There's really zero flow going through that segment right there. So if you want to clean that up, we can get rid of some of those and just trim. You don't think there's going to be any need for further expansion. No reason to have the excess duct work. If you have some excess little ducts and you aren't quite sure, what you can do is cap them. And cap is another sort of specific piece. If I go to systems, and let's see if I can find where the cap is. Oh, even here. No, oh, let me find it. If I right click on it, there's something where it says cap the, uh, oh, there's cap open ends. It's right up there. What that does, it puts a little piece here on the end, which is a cap piece. Because okay, no one likes an open duct. So you're going to tap into them. Now, what we've been putting on so far are really a whole lot of terminals that are sort of floating around the ceiling. There's really a lot of locations where you can go through and put the terminals into this building. And if you even want to start looking at some of those variations, this is all ceiling based. So ceiling based is kind of a very standard one. In this case, we have both the supplies and the returns coming to the ceiling. You can't go for other things. You can say, let's put them on the floor. Or we can say, let's go ahead and put them to the ceiling, but not go through and have a bunch of supply or return ducts. Um, just basically have grills in the ceiling where the ceiling plenum, the space above the ceiling, is actually used as a giant return duct. Okay, and a lot of the buildings we've been looking at are modeled that way. So if you were interested in a space more like that, it's actually a pretty straightforward thing to do. What I'll do is I'll just take out that return. I can take out the little transition. So picture this is now one of those return terminals just mounted on the ceiling, but above it is just all the open space in the ceiling. Okay. 
And then back over here, we'll just basically have an open duct that'll pull air in from the open space above the ceiling. So that's called a plenum system. And a lot of older buildings are done that way. It was sort of a very cheap way. It saved a lot of duct work to do it that way. Okay, so that actually kind of worked out okay. The disad of doing it this way is that since basically all the air is running around over the ceiling, any heat that's up in that ceiling is actually being captured in the return air. So you're actually getting warmer air than you need to because the air up in the ceiling often has the heat of the light fixture, the heat of any mechanical equipment in there, put a lot of dust in. There's all sorts of things about doing that. Another thing that's kind of strange about these sort of systems is if you're in an older building that has this kind of a system where there's just terminals, if someone's having an incredibly confidential conversation in the room next door, if you stand over here by the water cooler, you might actually be able to hear what's going on in the room next door, because there's really not a firm separation between the two. It's just air moving past. So yeah, that kind of system, it's a little less favored. We used to do it, but these days, since we're like nice, tight, efficient buildings where you can predict everything, that's considered a little bit less desirable. If you were thinking about, oh, that restaurant scenario, sort of like what I had uh, in those pictures, what they have is pretty much no return ducts. They just have all this kind of up against a wall. And what we'll do, let me even take this out for you. What they sometimes do is actually just put an air return just right on the side of the pipe itself. Let's take a look at that. So we have all these supplies and returns. These are all these nice ceiling mounted ones. They're kind of looking okay. If you'd like to actually just put a tap right on the side of the pipe, okay, which is fine if you want to go through and just collect it right at the pipe. You don't want to extend into the room. You can go out there and look for another type of a, a, a diffuser or return or terminal. Let's go through and see what we can find. I'll say insert, load family. We're going to go to, um, oh, where are we going to go to? Mechanical, MEP, air side. Let me go to some air terminals and see what we got here. Got some condensate hoods, some exhaust diffusers, exhaust grills, fume hoods, grease hoods. Got a lot of stuff in here. Louvers, range hoods. Here's a return diffuser with plenum linear slot hosted. That might be similar to the ones we saw on the ceiling, those linear ones. Got some supply diffusers. There's supply diffuser sidewall. That's actually pretty close to what I want. Let me see if I can find a return diffuser. Hosted. Turn diffuser, grill hosted, ceiling mounted, floor hosted. Let me try this one, rectangular hosted, see how that looks. If I want to place a terminal and put it right on a piece of ductwork, here's what I can do. Go to systems, say let's go through the air terminals. Okay. I have this choice of basically placing on face or placing on a work plane. Let's see if I can get this to sort of stick. That doesn't look quite right. Let me go through and look at it in the floor plan view. What if I have the right one? I'm not 100% convinced I do. Place on face, place on work plane. Place on vertical face. Is that going to work there? It looks like it's trying. Let me see. Nope. None are visible in that view. Let me go back to the 3D again. Put it a little bit low. That wasn't quite right. Let's try again. Place on face. It's interesting here. It won't let me do the vertical face. I'm trying to see if I can rotate that around. There's one, there's a very specific setting, I'll see if I can get it to pop up, where it's really that you actually put it right on the face of the duct. And it may not be that I have the right one loaded. So let me go back and see if I can find another one. Let's say mechanical. 
their terminals. Exhaustive user. Return diffuser, floor mounted, round neck, supply diffuser hosted. Let me try the supply diffuser sidewall. See if that'll do what I want it to. Systems, air terminals. Ah. Now, this is actually understood as having air terminal on duct. Okay, so this would allow me to. put it on the duct. It'll cut it right in there. Okay, so a lot of variations on this. We've just got to find the right terminal for your uh, situation. You will find that out there. So if you're interested in all the different air terminal variations, I actually got a bunch of files for you to look at. If you go out and under session 13, go to air supply and return variations, examples five through six. Well, I got some supply and return variations at the ceiling. I got some supply diffusers at the ceiling. I got some supply and return variations at the floor and wall. There's just all sorts of different stuff in here. So you can go ahead and take a look at these and it just sort of illustrates different ways of doing it and how you would model those things in Revit. Okay, the next big thing we're going to talk about, though, is really what we do with our air handler and where does it go. And you'll find that in a lot of buildings, a very common strategy is we put that air handler up on the roof. And here's an example of an air handler sort of sitting up on the roof. You notice that that air handler has two different things coming down. We have supply coming out one end. We have return coming back in this other end. We have this other thing which is going to take in some fresh air and sort of mix the fresh air with the return there and kind of change the balance. You notice this air handler is really a whole bunch of different chambers, and typically it goes through some sort of mixing chamber where we bring the re uh, recycled air and the fresh air together. You might have some filtration, you might have a heating chamber, and then a chilling chamber, or a dehumidification chamber, and then finally you get out to the conditioned air that's coming out the back side of it. So we have these things. And Often we put them up on roofs. Sometimes we put them on the ground outside the building. Sometimes we put them underground, down in a vault or in some place, so that they're not uh, kind of compromising your architectural uh, statement. So you want to often hide them away in different places. The important thing, though, is they're big pieces of the unit. They rumble or they have a big fan that's kind of constantly moving in there. They take a lot of power. So even they have a lot of heat that needs to be dissipated. Okay, so you have to be careful about where you put them. You can't even put them inside the mechanical room of your building as long as your mechanical room has some movers that allow it to get some fresh air in. Because you always need some sort of a duct, some sort of connection between the air handler and the outside so you can exhaust out any air you want to get rid of and bring in the fresh air to mix it together. Okay, so there's a lot of ways of doing that. And if you want to start looking at air handler variations, just as a preview, you can go to its examples, What is it? Four, we have air handlers in a mechanical room. We have air handlers on an exterior wall, air handlers outside, somewhere down in the basement, in an exterior pit. We have all sorts of different variations. So let me show you the one where air handler is in the mechanical room. So in this layout, what's happening is we've dedicated a little bit of space on the first floor to be a mechanical room. Let's see if I can find it. I've dedicated a little space right over here. You'll see that what I have happening is I have some ducts running into that space in the ceiling plan. So I have my returns and my supplies all coming together. And then inside that room, I have this air handler unit, where the air handler unit is some vertical thing that looks like this. It basically has supply coming in from the top, it has the or coming out from the top, it has the return coming in from the side, and I have a louver on the wall to go ahead and give that some fresh air. So 
well, okay, I can do it this way, I can put them up on the roof, I can put them outside. There's really a bunch of different variations. Let's go to, oh, another one. Let's say that it's gonna be in a basement mechanic. Oh, let me do it outside. I'm gonna put it in an exterior pit. If you have a hillside and you don't wanna see it, it's quite okay to put it in a pit outside the building. Again, you don't even necessarily want it to be out in the full sun. It just needs air. You're gonna move air through it and move air out of it. So the exterior pit strategy looks something like this. So I have a pit outside. You see there's a little bit of railing outside there. But down inside the pit, I have my air handler with the supply and return coming to it. Okay. Or you can put it up on the roof. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of different places you can. So where we're all finished today is here. We're going to, next time, look at the old air handler up on the roof. Let me go to this one. We're going to put an air handler up on our roof. That's sort of our choice. It doesn't matter where it is. It's wherever it fits in conveniently for you. And we are going to hook in the supply and the return to it and then do some calculations to figure out. Great. Given all our heating and cooling loads and our thermal properties, how big does this thing need to be? OK, so here's an example of one up on the roof where it's all connected together. So it's sitting up on the rooftop. Here it's kind of coming in from the bottom, both the supply and the return. But this is just one example of what an air handler can look like. Ours up on one top of Y2V2 sort of look like this. Okay. And what we're going to spend all our time doing is basically trying to get that big old duct coming in to match the size of the duct coming out and just doing a little bit of fussing with that to really go through and try and get those things to get together. So as you work on things and start going, I'd say get your main duct work going, get that in place. If you can figure out where your handler is going to be, put one in there, but don't necessarily worry about connecting it together just yet. Just sort of know where it is, because I'm going to teach you some tricks about how you have to get that together. And it's really going to come down to aligning, pulling things out of the way so you can make the connection, pushing them back together. There's this whole sort of messy thing about just how you get those to fit together, because it often is a whole lot of transition in a very tight space. And if there's anything that will make you pull your hair out, it's just trying to get those things connected together. Okay, so there's some tricks to how to make that happen. But so don't worry about that, Rob. And if you sort of know where your ducks are and where your main air handler is going to be, we can beat that other one. It just takes a little bit of a, uh, you know, there's some tricks to make it easier for you. Okay, beauty. Let us go ahead then and pause for today. I think we're there, aren't we? We are. Okay. And we will go ahead and we're going to have some office hours for some people and just be hanging out in the room for others, but uh, just here to answer questions and take care of things. We are joined by two illustrious TAs. <laughs> well, Except that kind of reception. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just grab, grab anyone you can in terms of, I know there's an order, I know a couple of you have signed up, but if you haven't, uh, feel free to kind of grab